Okay. Let's talk to Jens about this. <laughs> yeah. He was seeing another band on the side. <laughs> Now we're both ape adjacent, so we can you can call it that. He's he's called Jason. No, adjacent. We're adjacent to the ape. Uh, okay. We're close to it. I'm German. I'm ape, stupid. I ape already adjacent. Fucked it up. <laughs> I'm surprised I can read it that this. Oh. Range though, because my eyes are not good. I like the title of the next song though, I Rape You. That's <laughs> by the band Setlist. <laughs> Setlist. It's Sadist. Pff, I love Setlist. <laughs> yeah, they're great. Okay. Like supporting curfew, I know. Supporting curfew, yeah. Every band supports curfew. Okay. I don't even know how to start this. It's already recorded. Right? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Due to it has been a while for us both since we had a social awkward yeah. uh, situation. Right. What are we even doing here? Like, what, why, why did you bring all this? I wanted to do something that is, uh, like I told you before, just a conversation, not having questions and letting it, letting it flow while talking about drumming and drummers and music and just be casual and nothing else. Yeah. And that's why you brought five songs for me to react to, <laughs> yeah. you planning German bastard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, actually, I, I just wanted to show you the songs, and then I figured maybe do something with it. All right. Like, yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Fair right. enough. So yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Whatever you want to do. It would be like really playing it to you without cameras and then having cameras. Okay. 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 So. So you're going to play me something now. I'm going to play you uh, something. Solstice. Okay, Solstice. You have, have you heard of the band? Yeah, I've heard of them, but I don't think I've heard anything by them. They had um, one particular record out in the early 90s, and James Murphy is playing a solo on this track, and it's the band of Rob Barrett from Cannibal Corpse. Ah, gotcha. And he's, he's singing as well. Oh, right, okay. And it's Alex Marquez on drums. Gotcha. From Malevolent Creation, another yeah, yeah, band. Yeah. So he's a crazy good drummer yeah. from that era. There was a, a giveaway CD back in the 90s. It was called in German, um, I don't pay anymore, because it was like five oh, Deutschmarks at gotcha. that time. But that was the opening track, as far as I remember, and I was blown away by it. For me, it was the definition of a thrash metal song. The best thrash metal song ever written for my ears. Gotcha, or yeah. thrash, death. Drumming is so insane, and it never stops. This is why, please, please listen to that, sir. I was, All right, I'm gonna listen to it. I was blown away. It's cool, it's so like, he has a Chuck Schuldner almost like, like uh, vocal for a little bit. I dig that, that's a cool voice he has, man. Aggression! <laughs> Well, holy shit. Yeah, I guess you do hear bands that kind of do this still, but they're becoming more and more rare. It's like uh -huh. it almost had to be in the 90s to, to, to be this. Yeah, that's pretty relentless. I mean, that's even, yeah, it's death metal, thrash metal in, the, in between. I really like the, the voice. The voice, yeah. He does have that bit of that early Chuck Schuldner. Not as high pitched, a little rougher. Yeah, but it had like, it reminded me of that a uh -huh. little bit, yeah. Again, I was so blown away by that track from the first second, I was like, whoa, what's that? Oh my God, drumming, solo, what? Yeah. It, in a nutshell for me, that's death, thrash, metal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty dope. But so you had people from, from Cannibal Corpse, you had uh -huh. people from... Uh, uh, Malevolent Creation. Malevolent Creation. 
Uh, and James Murphy. Yeah. I think if he was probably just playing that nice solo. He just right? brought into for yeah. the lead. Yeah. Because, I mean, they are all friends back then. Yeah, yeah. Still. But yeah, every time I hear that I want to smash something, just be happy that your table is still in one piece. Well, in this particular <laughs> case, I am glad for, because I actually <laughs> built this table Holy back shit. in the day. Yeah. Oh my God. Back in uh, 93 or something. Oh, wow. When I was still working as a carpenter, yeah, I, I did. Was it some sort of uh, just yeah, for a school, you? Yeah, school project. School like, project, yeah. Okay. But I, yeah, I, I, I barely ever used it at home. For, for, it, it really had no, the style, you know, they wanted you to do these with the curves and, uh, okay. uh, and it, I just never felt like it suited my house. So it actually was sitting here in an attic little uh -huh. space up here, rotting away for like 10 years oh, until wow. we built this room and I... I opened that up because we were looking for, I don't even know what, and I saw this table and I'd forgotten about it. Like, yeah. we got to use it. That's not very drum related. <laughs> you know, okay, you're gonna play. You're gonna play me some more shit. Some more shit. All right, so, play, me, um, play me some more shit. No, let's let's do s at monstrosity first. Monstrosity, huh? Uh, you know monstrosity, right? It's By a, name. Okay, it's uh, early Florida death metal. Corpse yeah. Grinder used to sing in that band before he Ooh. came to uh, Candle Corpse. Corpse. And a bunch of other guys who are uh, here and there and everywhere in the death metal scene played uh, and play with Monstrosity. Even the guitar player, no, I've, yeah, Pat O'Brien. No, I've, yeah, I've heard Monstrosity. Yeah. I, do, I don't remember what they sound like, though, or sounded like. And that track is one of the greatest death metal tracks I ever heard. Gotcha. And this is uh, not the most complicated drumming ever but it's very special for that song and it's very fitting and it's kind of a little bit in regards of Gene Hoagland, Sean Reinhardt and kind of a, a little bit. It's, right. it's a little nod to that. All right. It's one of those songs where you just have to nod when it starts. I mean you, prove, you will prove me wrong now but then there is this urge. I'm, I'm very good at proving you wrong man. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely has that Florida, yeah, huh? Florida vibe to it. Like the the choice of sounds too, like kind of the effects and stuff. Okay. It reminds me of, of death and you know, like cynic and stuff a little bit. Uh -huh. But apart from death and cynic, you weren't too much into death metal, right? Back in the day. No, not really. I mean, thrash metal was one thing. Like, well, that was mostly like Bay Area kind of. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think I listened to Death prior to Human. Uh huh. So, and uh, and it was a drumming that. Stuck yeah, with you. yeah. First, mm -hmm. but then it was. Then it became equally kind of about his uh, the vocals and. You know. huh. I I always loved Chuck Schulman's kind of tonality or the timbre of his voice and how he chose to sing, man. I like that style. It, to, to me, it I don't know exactly what it is. It's a sound, the effects on the guitar, uh, the production. It does give you that Florida 90s vibe. Yeah. Uh, guitars are a little like the, the rhythms. Guitar sounds like maybe it wasn't recorded there at the that death more use and more sound. That gives me a hint that maybe it wasn't recorded there, but Whatever the mindset is kind of similar as far as the, the sounds they're going for. I'm not really sure. I, I just know that the um, the record before wasn't recorded there and it sounds yeah. a little different. They, I mean, for what it was at the time, I thought they sounded great. You listen yeah. to them now, it's like, eh, those more sound recordings are so-so, but this actually kind of sounded better. I don't know, the guitars were a little more stronger in this than, than some of the death stuff where the 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 drums and the guitars were more this had a little more oomph to the guitars i uh -huh. think but we're not here to talk about production and no. i'm probably as as per, guitar players. as per usual <laughs> i'm probably completely wrong like someone will be like dude you're completely wrong it was actually yeah. the other way around and i here i am again the the dumb swede which is well you know i'm, I'm kind of used to that at this point so that's it's all good it's not being a swedish guy for, for me it's always like being the drummer, and I say, ah, the guitar sound in You're that saying way. I'm dumb because I'm the drummer. <laughs> yeah. Or I became the drummer because I'm dumb. I think 
being dumps, the drummer it pl- dumps. Didn't, didn't I, make I, it I want a sh- I want a shirt with just a drum kit, <laughs> and then it just says dumps. Yep. D U M B S. Yeah, I, I yeah. get it. I get it. I, I, yeah. Thanks for explaining yeah. that joke. But it's not cool to be like self-deprecating like this either. <laughs> you know, drummers are the coolest after all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. It's, guitar guitar players made me think that I'm stupid. That's the problem. Yeah, let's not Maybe. even get into the whole guitarist <laughs> discussion because that's going to take us a while. Yeah. But yeah, I was kind of late to the game when it came to that, this kind of death metal and uh-huh. stuff. That wasn't really until I kind of joined a, a band, I guess, like early 90s. But I mean, you had to play with all those bands in the end, or with, with some of them. Well, yeah, some of them, yeah, for sure. Those nuclear blast packages you were on back then. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. but it wasn't really. They were. They didn't really have any bands that were like this, though. Well, to my knowledge, they had plenty of death metal bands, but not really kind of the Florida vibe. They were on Nuclear Blast. Oh, they were. Uh huh. Well, so there you prove me wrong. <laughs> it, 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 it That's was. the game. Like prove you wrong. That's uh, the title so of the segment. They, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> No, I, I mean, I'm so unsure of this that, that yes, I, I probably everything I say is probably going to be wrong because <laughs> I, I, I'm not that familiar with with this stuff. But. The first two records by Monstrosity are Nuclear Blast, and yeah. then they switched. Yeah, for me, it was really like the Death uh, Human album, and that's the first time I heard Death, and then I went back and I listened to other things by them and with Gene Hoagland on drums, and I caught on to him as a drummer. But also, early, I mean, when was uh, Strapping City? What was that, like 90... 1996, I guess. 1995 or 6? 95, I think. I think it came out the same year as uh, Destroyers Improve. By then, of course, I knew who it was, but that was such a trip, though, because it was the music was so, like, its own thing with Strapping. It wasn't really death metal. It was something new, like, with all the synths yeah. and everything, and just the layers of sounds. It was just, like, overwhelming. It was really fantastic, actually. And any, pretty much anything with strapping with Gene on it, it's like, just, you know, with Gene on it, he's the only drummer, <laughs> I, he was the only drummer to play with strapping as far as I know. So. No, no, in the first record there was another drummer. Oh, was there? Uh-huh. Oh, the first one, Heaviest. Before City. Yeah. Yeah, I think I kind of missed that album completely. So yeah. I still love that band, that's one of the best like metal bands that ever existed to me, it was strapping, man. Yeah, for me, back then, City and Chaos Fear were the two records that were the incorporation of chaos and noise and, oh, okay, and gotcha. busy yeah. stuff you can't comprehend because it's mixed that way that it's unrecognizable at, in, in parts. Yeah, I, I, mean, I you, see you, what you mean. get the point, but not all of it. There's, yeah, there's just yeah. a surrounding stuff that yeah, I see what you, mean. you can't grasp. And I like that about the music because yeah. it made it so more aggressive. And Oh, yeah. Like so, uh, there I was think, that final I think push. Whether we, it was a conscious thought or not, I, I'm sure that that strapping had a big effect on Chaos Fair for us because we listened a lot to that, especially City. Yeah. And, and for me as a drummer, so did you know like, um, Focus Cynic. So yeah, those two, uh, Sean Reinhardt and and Gene Hoagland, had a, had a pretty big impact. Not that I incorporated. I mean, we're, I don't. I, I never really to learned to play like like them, in that regard. But but they were still, as you know, huge aspirations, you know, of the time. I never tried to like, do that like emulate their style or anything. I it's never. Like I the, never even tried to play any of their stuff. It was just like it was just cool for its uniqueness and how different it was. But I mean, to me, Pantera was also an important thing early for us. I think. Uh-huh. Because they were like one of those bands there in the early 90s when everything was just grunge, grunge, grunge and all over the place. And they were like one of the bands that, at least in Sweden, were doing great and they're still selling a lot of albums. But metal kind of died down, you know, for, for a few years there. And, and for me, Death and, and Cynic and, and Pantera were three of those bands. And Pantera obviously being something completely different, but the, like the, the, the fuck you approach of that <laughs> band was so over the top that, you know, you, you laughed at it, but it was also like, yeah, that's a that's a pretty hard band, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, Far Beyond Driven, Vulgar Display of Power, uh, and Cemetery Gates album. Uh, the, the Cowboys, from, Cowboys Hell. from Hell as oh. well. Uh, those three albums, I think they were, you know, they should be on any metal head's shelf. If they're not, it's, you're missing something, you know. Yeah, in, in every department. Yeah. 
So that's another influential drummer, you know. He had a particular style that's also like not the easiest to emulate. Vinny? Yeah. Oh. Vinny Paul, very kind of... That tasty space. Yeah, yeah. Between the massive hits. Yeah, he, he wasn't so that's, like, he was uh, he wasn't always like, he wasn't trying to like fill every single 16th note with something. Yeah, I mean, now they're out touring again and, and, and uh, Charlie Benetti does a great job of yeah. it. And it's also... They're using the same sounds and samples, so the the same kit, kit, the kit, same guys, the kit same itself everything. sounds uh, Pantera. So he does a great job of it, but it's it's definitely, I don't know. He had a particular swagger when he played. It's it's a shame it's gone, man. The interesting thing is um, that's always something I thought about when I, I watched him. He was a big guy, not like fat guy, but yeah, massive on the, on the big side. Yeah, and he he sounds like it. That's the thing. I see and, what you mean. I see what you mean. And teach, my teacher told me when I played a little too nervous, too yeah. uh, in front of the beat, not steady. Yeah, not, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, he was like, think that you're a big fat guy and that you sit there like a job of the hut or something. Gotcha. And then play like that. And that's yeah. what I thought about Vinnie Paul. Not being a fat guy, no... But like yeah, he wasn't he wasn't big like that. But I mean, he had uh, solid yeah. big dude. Yeah, I see what you mean. He he brought like he brought some oomph to the kit with his with his actual physique, I guess. Yeah, shit equipment. Yeah, equipment again. Really? I should have never invited you. <laughs> <laughs> At least it made a click sound when it's like yeah, out. When it died. So I maybe it's not all shit gear then. Um, so are you gonna play me some more? Yeah. What are you gonna and play me now? Now I play you the song um, I stumbled across, and this is why I am. Uh, I had this segment in mind. One. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's talk to Jens about this. <laughs> yeah. He was seeing another band on the side. <laughs> yeah, this. Sound completely changed. Yeah. Now it sounds like spastic ink or something. Uh huh. All right, straight fusion now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's like a, a schizophrenic person uh -huh. kind of yeah that 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 was a little schizoid but that's that it is Jens though right no it's not him it's not what year is this from I think the 2000s because I I know he has done like guest things Maybe it's on him. stuff because, because that sounds, sounds exactly so like, like he him. sounded in the like 90s early 2000s yeah I wasn't preparing myself if it's not him it's like scary uh, like uh-huh yeah yeah let's ask him is he he's he's around today right yeah he's gonna let's be confront here. him we gotta put him up against the wall about this shit. <laughs> he's seeing another band on the side <laughs> yeah. oh man yeah. all right yeah that was i mean that's cool it's very that's some big steps to take within a song like let's go from this to this because yeah. not only does the complete like the whole like the, everything changes uh -huh. it's not just one sound that's different it's like completely changes so that's uh, that's pretty bold. Uh -huh. But even though, the, I mean, the, the the first part of the song before it goes into like these different other segments actually sounds like it could be from from something of us. Yeah, because even the beat it's, it's and how the, the, the guitar. Stuff. Yeah, it's very very kind of totally. like mid nineties Meshuggah styling. Yeah, and you could have yeah. written that maybe. Yeah, between actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not it's not too yeah it's proof. not too far fetched. It's only when you get like the deep growly vocals that it's like oh no it sounds like something. When the other song begins and before the next song begins, <laughs> and that's yeah. Song. If you want to if you want to put it like that, yeah. How what's it called and uh, that that um, I, I'm missing the word, that's carp carpet. 
carpet, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Table, <that's>... table, <laughs> yeah. Person, <laughs> room, person, yeah. You got Camera it. Camera, TV. You, right? you got it. You got it. Yeah. No, I don't know what you're looking for. <laughs> Sometimes I'm first. Words. You started something here. You did this. <laughs> that's a gift. Yeah. If it's here and long like that, that's a present that someone gave you. Uh, if it's further no, down, mean... if it's on the, if it's on the floor. <laughs> And and, yeah, if, and it's so pretty flat. It's a rug. I so deserve this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you kind of do actually. <laughs> no, um, I mean, what's the 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 carpet that is uh, made from different parts? Oh, patch patchwork. Patchwork. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. It's uh, a little more complicated than carpet. Yeah, and that's a it's patchwork. Patch, patchwork song. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I see where you're going with this. <laughs> Okay, we're listening to more. What's this now? That's sadist. I oh, what I read at set, yeah, uh, set list. It's set not list. set list. No, it's sadist. I rape you. Yeah, for a band with the name set list, I rape you <laughs> is kind of not going to fly as a title. But if your name is sadist, then maybe. Yeah. I mean, if the name is set list, I expect everything and anything. So it could be I raped you. We'll see tomorrow if you actually did. <laughs> if, you, if you actually did rape me, uh, we're um, going to have to have a discussion about that. Italian band. Ah. Ah. And um, guitar player plays keyboard at the same time sometimes. Oh, I thought you were, gonna, you were just going to end there. Guitar player plays keyboard. It's like he's not a guitar player, then he's a keyboard player. Yeah, no, he's, uh, he's actually he playing does like both. The, the solo stuff and all the, the, okay. the weirdo things. And um, Does he do it like, at the same time too? Like a, uh, At times, yeah, it's like super multi instrumentalist uh, vocalist has a, so a pig mask edit, yeah but okay vocalist has a pig mask does he squeal though not when i'm around i don't know what i, that, I don't know what that means <laughs> it's, it's from the record crust it's from 2000 i was looking for atheist cynic that kind of music and gotcha. it wasn't so much around back then and yeah. so i was super happy to find sadist <laughs> There's going to be a, a solo part, which is why I picked that one and not the other tracks. I mean, since this is pre-YouTube and pre-all that... Um, yeah. It, it, when yeah, that was for. I mean, it was unusual. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever heard anyone like ride a splash like it did, like an offbeat. Uh -huh. Not for a couple of hits, that but long. for like a whole part. <laughs> like, oh, you opted for the splash. <laughs> okay, that's uh -huh. unique. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was one of those heavy rotation records I had back then when I listened to your band and strapping and all that. It was like this little box with. Dillinger and all those crazy bands. Gotcha, yeah. And uh, All right. Well, I've learned a lot about your musical taste <laughs> uh, today. No, nothing bad. It was actually pretty cool. Speaking of Italian bands, uh -huh. Scarve, they were not Italian at all. No, French. But that's, yeah, that, now I'm just jumping completely. During all the times, that the sessions that we've had together when we're talking about drummers and drumming, mm -hmm. we, yes, we always come back to Sean Reinhardt and Gene yeah, Hall, yeah, yeah. but Dirk Verburen is also one of those, like, uh, you know, I admit I got to, like, hear his uh, stuff later than, than Sean Reinhardt and mm -hmm. Gene stuff and, and, and early metal stuff, but that uh, Scar Irradiant uh, album with that one track that we played in the kitchen Asphyxiate. before Asphyxiate. That is so nifty. That that drum playing on that is so cool, man. That's another drummer that 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 has done a lot of awesome stuff. Ah. And that's definitely the one with Frederick's solo on. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's obviously more modern than the stuff we've been listening to. But not by that much. No, no, no. I mean, this is what, 2003? Mm. Yeah. Good production, though. Yeah, good, very good production, yeah. And I love those two singers. It's For me, it's one of the... Yeah, and actually, one of the few times that it actually worked. Yeah. Because a lot of times, 
I just get annoyed at it. Yeah. Yeah, this song is this song is really yeah, cool. Not good. only the song, the album is great. Fantastic. Yeah. Actually, Scarf was one of those one of the, the last bands I discovered that I really dug. Like yeah, really. yeah, yeah. When when metal I was kind of fed up with it with the here's the new band and that new band and like oh, okay. Oof, yeah. Doesn't surprise me that much anymore. Yeah. So. And Gorguts, um, the re re reincarnation of Gorguts and Scarf were yeah, the, the last two bands that really came to my heart. Yeah. So, but um. That's the record before that. Oh, I have heard this. I recognize this. Also, I have heard this album, but I didn't. Yeah. I didn't listen to it a lot. It, it Radiant is basically the, the album that I, I've listened to. Yeah, that is but I'm not super familiar with every song on that album either. But because that's the city part where it's like d dirtier, what? like a lot of a lot going on. Yeah. But talking about city and case here again, why did you choose to have this super noisy sound on that record? Because it's it stands out so much from all the other stuff you've done. Before you had like the. The, the metal sound, so the yeah, fusion yeah, metal yeah. sound, and after that it was the Meshuggah sound. But that one is right in between, and it's just ugly and, and loud. Yeah, it's kind of, to me it was always like a little sh on the sharp end of things. Like it was lacking like warmth and bottom, it was very yeah. kind of cold. Absolutely. Very it's cold. Ice cold. Yeah. But I mean, I think like we said earlier, I think uh, uh, albums like, like uh, City and Whatever we were listening to at the time had an effect on what we wanted out of that album. I mean, we it was outspoken for us in the band that we wanted to just go as nuts as we pro as we could, basically, and we wanted it to be chaotic sounding, and hence the word, you know, the title of Chaos Fear. But the first track, Concern, Concaten Concatenation, Concatenation. Yeah. Um, it already starts like or it's it's a build up to more noise and more noise. So yeah, yeah. It sets the tone of. for the whole. Yeah, record. yeah. And in the end, I can't really decide what symbols you hit, if it's a symbol or just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whatever it is. Oh no, I don't think the definition is very clear on that. I, I do remember using. I had a lot of symbols in the setup for that recording. There was all sorts of stuff on there. All right. Even really boring things like this have to come to an end. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, no, I obviously had a blast at the time of my <laughs> life, but I mean, I, my, my hope, my sincere, so much. My, <laughs> my sincere hope is at the end of the day, it's going to come across as very boring. <laughs> like, you don't have to edit it at all. <laughs> of course I have, otherwise it's terrible. You don't have to edit this one bit. <laughs> Just like this. Just put drum talk... <laughs> takes a vacation and <laughs> here is just two permanent vacation. and here is just two idiots talking <laughs> shit about bands i don't know to begin with it, if it, so instead of between two ferns <laughs> adjacent to ape yeah that's yeah. what we're going to call it right ape adjacent <laughs> all right oh, hold on i got a i got a gift for you <laughs> Get a fart? Yeah, no, no, no. Hold on. Oh, probably your mic wasn't in, right? You yeah, you it was unplugged the whole time. I hope so. <laughs> My gift to you is that I'm gonna have a, a sip of beer. Okay, yeah, that's. Uh, and you can. Uh, I can watch you drink beer. You can watch. Mmm, <laughs> that's a yummy beer. All right, that concludes this episode of <laughs> Who Knows What They're Talking About. <laughs> oh, there's your. Uh, your I fountain. Uh, I overflowed. Yeah. <laughs> I hope to just come across this mumbling like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Your voice is super sharp, and my voice is so. <laughs> like, like a muted uh, Muppet Show uh, chef. <laughs>